everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be running you through my everyday makeup for the winter time. In the winter I do like to change up my makeup a little bit and I also like to change up my pre-makeup routine which I'll kind of run you through in a second. In the winter obviously your skin gets really really dry so it's so important to look after your like base before actually applying any makeup in my opinion. So I'm also going to run you through what I use before I actually start putting on beauty products. This is obviously going to be a chit chat get ready with me as you can tell by the title and I'm going to be talking about a few things that I've like changed recently because a pretty obvious thing that has changed is my name uh, so I'll kind of talk to you guys about that while I'm doing your makeup but for now let's just head on into it. So as I said I want to run you through my base, I have actually applied two products already hence why I have orange hands, I need to go and wash them. So the two products that I have used already are the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturising Gel. I got this like a year ago when I was in New York. I can't believe it's been a year ago since I went to New York. It feels like yesterday. But this is amazing. As you can see, I've got hardly anything left. Just a tiny little bit in the bottom. But it is, it's incredible. It is, it makes dramatically different changes. And I just feel like my skin is actually moisturised and ready for makeup once I've used this. And I've also noticed it kind of blurs out my skin slightly and deals with any pigmentation or anything like that. So I really, really like this product. I've also been using this, which isn't intended for your face, but it works fine on my face, it hasn't been breaking me out. I, I was using the um, facial cream, but the bottle is tiny and it's really expensive for the price, so I just moved over to this. Uh, this was kindly sent to me, and I thought I'd try it out, and I've been really, really enjoying it. It is the Instant Healthy Glow Everyday Tinted Body Lotion. It's a Saint-Tropez Gradual Tan. Uh, it's a pretty big bottle. It's 200 mils, and it's quite cheap. I'll just pop a little bit out so you can see. But it is a kind of caramelly colour, I guess you could say. If I pop that on the back of my hand, you'll definitely be able to see it on there. I've the rest onto my leg. But I really like this. It's kind of like, I wouldn't call it body makeup, but it's close to being that. Because obviously it does have that tint to it. A lot of gradual tans are white and they do move very gradually but this you do notice a difference straight away and then obviously if you reapply every day you'll notice a great difference. I don't have any makeup on right now and you guys know that I am very pale. Um, I do have fake tan on my body obviously but on my face that's all I've been using and gradually it has built up the colour of my skin and I'm really happy with it. I feel like my skin just looks a lot better when I'm tan so this is a must have every morning. So enough talking about products that I've already used. This is one that I'm about to apply and it is the Body Shop Drops of Light. You guys know that I love this stuff. It's like a it's like a brightening cream, I guess you could say. And I do I have made a little hole at the top so I don't actually use the bottom bit. But this is just really nice and I apply it to the points on my face where I kind of want to highlight. So anywhere I would put a lighter concealer, I pop this um, cream. It is intended for under your eyes, I'm pretty sure, but um, I like to use it under my eyes, down the bridge of my nose. Uh, like I said, anywhere I'd use a lighter concealer to highlight. I really love this product. I've been using it for probably a year now as well. I think it was sent to me around last Christmas time. And I've been using it ever since. So the first question I have is how do you maintain your composure? Your job must be stressful at times. I'm sure life has its bumps. You're just so strong. How do you do it? First off, thank you so much. Um, I've come a long way with dealing with it. YouTube is a very stressful job. Um, it's it's challenging at times because I'm not one to bite my tongue and I feel like in this industry you kind of have to. You can't go like on like a big rampant rage. Um, some things I do to kind of let my frustration out is I just kind of like share with you guys some of the stupid comments I get. Um, I feel like that's a good way to kind of just like laugh at a situation because I do get a lot of ridiculous comments um, on my page so I feel like kind of sharing that and turning it into a conversation topic that can be laughed at is a good way of dealing with it instead of being offended by it or upset by it just kind of like turn it into a conversation topic with you guys and talk to you guys about it because that way you don't really get angry or worked up over it, it's just kind of like a laugh. It's kind of like oh look how ridiculous this is and it turns into a laugh instead of just like Oh, I can't believe they said that to me. Um, obviously not all hate comments I share, but the ones that I do think are just genuinely ridiculous, I do share with you guys because I think it's really funny. The next thing I'm going in with is concealer. And I'm not actually going to mention the brand name because this, like I mentioned in one of my old videos, this is a brand that I don't actually support. 
but I'm just using up the rest of the products because I don't want to waste them. I absolutely hate wasting things. But yeah, that's what I do now to kind of deal with it, or I just ignore it. If you asked me that question a year ago, I would have been lying with the answer because literally a year ago, just before last Christmas, I'm using my concealer on a beauty blender, by the way, and just popping it onto any blemishes that I've got. Uh, if you asked me this a year ago, I would have said, oh, hey, it doesn't affect me. But last year, I was such a different person, and I was so weak. Like, I was so mentally weak last year. I tried to kill myself multiple times last year, and that is the truth, and it's difficult to talk about. I think, I don't think it should be difficult to talk about. I think you should be able to open up and stuff like that, but I know there's a lot of judgment. Um, but this time last year, I tried to kill myself multiple times, and I don't want to talk about it too much because I know it can be like quite upsetting to hear for some people. But, um, and that was mainly down to YouTube hate, like, not YouTube comments, but there's a hate forum, I'm sure some of you guys know what it is, but there is a hate forum, like, dedicated to YouTubers, and there were a lot of people talking about me on there, my family, my friends, and the thing is, everything that was put on there was just a lie, like, I had things sent to my address from the people, on that page, I had literal like birthday cards sent to my address from like signed off from the people on that site, and it went to the police, and they found quite a few of the people that were posting on this site, and I just thought, you know what, like, forget it. I'm not wasting any more of my time on these people. I'm not wasting any more of my time on negativity, and. It took me a long time to get to that point, like I, it was affecting me so badly. I was getting emails from these people on the website to so my personal email address and I remember once we were supposed to be going to the Grand Theatre to watch a show and I got an email just before I left and it really messed me up and I got there and I had a few drinks and it probably wasn't the best idea to have a drink because I wasn't in the right mindset to be drinking and I just like lost it, like I left, I left my family and I still feel really bad about it um, but that was down to that hate website and I don't really want to like spend too much time talking about it but this time last year I would have had a completely different answer to how I deal with hate now nothing phases me, people's opinions on me, I don't care, it's my life, it's fine I don't need other people's opinions, I only need mine but this time last year was really rough for me and I'm so happy that now I can deal with things in a better way without letting it negatively affect me so much. Now I'm going to be going in with my Makeup Forever um, foundation palette thing. I love this because I never like one shade of foundation. I'm always like a few mixed together and now I can do that so I'm going to mix a few different shades. So I'm sorry but I don't have an exact shade for you on what I am. So let's get mixing. So the next question I'm going to be answering, which is probably why most of you guys are going to be watching this video is why did you change your name? I'm just mixing together my foundation at the moment with a little spatula. Uh, so yeah, why did I change my name? So to some of you, it came as a big shock. If you have been a subscriber for years, then you will know that I want to change my name. Like I've spoken about it multiple times. If you're a like, close friend, you'll know that I want to change my name. I've literally been thinking about changing my name since I was very, very young. Um, I've wanted to change my name for years and years and years and I've kind of been thinking about it more this past year. I'm just going to apply the foundation to my skin with this spatula as well. I've been kind of thinking about it more this past year and kind of making it more of a realistic thing. Um, and it is all officially done, it's all legally done, it's finished. But the thing is, like, I have been thinking about this for a long time. And I realised the other day that when I spoke about it on Twitter, it kind of made it look like I'd only been thinking about it for three days. Because I tweeted saying, um, I'm thinking about changing my name, blah blah blah. And then three days later I changed my name. And I feel like a lot of people think like, oh she thought about changing her name and then three days later she's done it. No, this has been a really long process. I've been thinking about names for a really long time. Um, I've always really loved the name Victoria, uh, which is my name now. 
I've always loved that name and I've always kind of thought it's so silly that um, that people think it's weird. Like I didn't choose my birth name. My mum chose that before she even knew what I was going to look like, before she knew my personality. Like she literally chose that name when I was a tiny little baby. Like she chose my name before I was even born. And I just think it's so silly, like why wouldn't I want to change my name? That name was for like an unborn child, like no one knew what that child was going to do, like I could be in a completely different position where I feel like Bethany would suit me or, I don't know. I've just, I've never liked the name Bethany. If your name's Bethany and you like it, that's fine, but personally I don't like the name. Um, I do know a Bethany that it suits. I went to school with a girl named Bethany and the name really suited her. Like, I feel like Bethany was like, I feel like people are going to misunderstand what I'm saying, but I feel like Bethany was like the old me. Like, I feel like it was blonde hair, blue eyes, really shy. Like, it just wasn't me. And I don't feel like that little girl anymore. Like, I feel like a grown woman with a house and a business. I'm not this shy, curled up person anymore. I've got a voice and I'm not afraid to use it. And... I've never liked my name and I feel like me changing my name isn't just about me disliking the name. It symbolises a lot for me because this past year I have done so much growing. Like it makes me a little bit emotional to think about but this past year I've grown so much as a person. Like I had to go on antidepressants earlier this year which is something I hadn't been on for years and years and years. And I felt like I was failing. And I feel like the realization that I was actually going back on antidepressants because I wasn't strong enough was like a kick up the ass, if you know what I mean. Like it really kicked me into shape. It made me realize like, what are you doing? Like you can't let these things negatively affect you. Like all the hate was getting to me and that wasn't the main reason for my depression. Like it runs in the family. Like, I had a very slight chance of not getting it, but yeah, I just feel like I've grown so much as a person that not only did I dislike the name and I felt like it didn't suit me, but also I feel like I've just grown so much and I'm a completely different person now. And I, I've i always said to myself, I want to change my name. Um, I didn't know when the right time was, uh, but I feel like I kind of knew like that I wanted to do it this year like everything was kind of fitting into place this year and that was when I made like my final decision but I have been thinking about it for years and years it wasn't a rush thing I didn't just think oh I'm changing my name and then did it the next day it wasn't like that um, but yeah I'm really happy with it it was really nerve-wracking because obviously being on the internet, your life's on the internet, my job is literally social media, that's what my job is, but yeah, like, I knew there was going to be positive reactions and I also knew there were going to be people who thought that like, they're entitled to say what I do with my life, which for some viewers that's a fair point, like viewers that um, have kind of followed me from the start and feel like they are really invested in my life, that's fine. But I found that when I changed my name, those viewers that have been with me from the start and are like loyal viewers that like watch things and support me and if I'm trying to do something for charity they'll help. Like those viewers were the ones that were most supportive and it was people's, it was people whose name I don't even recognise were the ones kind of giving me grief. I got a lot of hate off the back of changing my name. People were calling me selfish because I changed my name and I just thought like two by two equals five, but I don't see how changing your name makes you selfish. But yeah, I feel like I don't really care about those people's opinions because like, who are you? I've never seen you in my life before. And now that I've made a change, you wanna like pipe up now and try and give your opinion when you've never given your opinion before. And um, yeah. That's why I want to change my name. If you have any more questions, feel free to like answer. Uh, feel free to answer them. If you have any more questions, then feel free to ask them. But I feel like I've kind of addressed everything. 
Um, I know a lot of people want to know how my family reacted to it. My family weren't massively pleased, uh, but at the end of the day, it is still my life. And I've said to them, look, if calling me Victoria makes you feel uncomfortable, call me Beth. It's fine. Like, it's completely fine. I'm not going to, like, have a big tantrum or kick up a big fuss because they're not using my new name. Like, I've said to you guys, if calling me Victoria makes you feel uncomfortable, then call me Beth. But I feel like the only problem with that is that people will kind of do it in a malicious way because that's what a lot of the people who were sending hate were doing, they were still calling me Beth. Um, I don't know why, I think it's quite a childish thing to do, but there are childish people out there. Obviously, they may be children. But, yeah, my name's changed now, my family didn't react. Um, I had a few negative reactions. Uh, my family, I don't have to say this in a polite way, but my family aren't the most respectful people. Um, I knew the people that were going to react respectfully to it, and I knew the people that were going to just be like, that name's disgusting and rude, and I can't believe you're doing that. Um, and I was right about who did what. And I'm not going to say who did what, but if you're close to you, you probably know. Um, but yeah, most of the reactions have been fine. So... It's not really that big of a deal. It's a big deal for me because it kind of symbolizes a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, me changing my name is a very minuscule thing. So, we're almost done with the base now. As you can see, I like to blend in my foundation a lot. I do a lot in blending. Still blending. I'll blend while I talk. But I feel like the more you kind of push the product into your skin and really blend it in, the better it looks. Because um, it kind of molds in and like... It doesn't look like a, a layer of something, it looks like it's meant to be there, which I like. I'm a fan of this foundation, but it's just quite hard to set, and I don't use powder as well, so if you guys know any good setting sprays, then please let me know. So, a question that I've had is, are you happy? And the honest answer is yes, I am happy. I've been dealing with, um, I've been dealing with depression for a long time. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, depression, I, my personal belief is that depression never really goes away. Um, I feel like it can get better though. Um, I feel like it never fully goes away. I'm just using a little eyeshadow brush to set my concealer. Uh, yeah, I don't think it ever fully goes away. I think it gets better and more manageable and you learn to deal with it, uh, which is what I have been focusing on for a long time now. This has been a long time coming. I have been waiting for the day that I can answer a question saying, are you happy? And honestly say yes. Like, I can finally do that. And I feel like so many, so many things have just come together. Like, I have a beautiful house. Like, my flat, I was never really happy in my apartment. Like, I don't know, it, did, it never felt like home. I never walked through the door and felt like, homely when I was there. I liked it. It was a beautiful space, but it never felt like home. And this house is amazing. I love it. I've got all the space I could ever want. I have a really lovely kitchen. I still need to finish my kitchen. I started but I never finished it. But I just love this house. It feels homely. Uh, it's not 100% finished, but we're almost there. I took my uh, mirror down the other day because I'm putting my TV above the fireplace because I feel like that's just where it's supposed to be and it's never been there it's always been on like a thing over there so that, like there are a few things that need finishing and I probably should have waited till after Christmas but I'm very impatient but yeah I just feel like things are like fitting into place I'm finally happy with where I am and who I am and like I just don't care about other people's opinions and I feel like that is such a hard thing to get like before I used to think that I didn't care about people's opinions but now I know I just don't care like I really don't so many people tell me I can't do things and when someone tells me I can't do something it just makes me want to do it even more are any of you guys like that if someone tells me I can't do something because I'm too young or I'm a woman or this that this that it makes me want to do it so much more just to like prove them wrong I don't know I don't know Someone asked, did you lose weight? You look awesome, looking so in shape. Uh, thank you so much. I actually haven't lost weight. I've been trying to put weight on uh, because I was very thin and I just wasn't happy with my body at all. 
I felt like I was too thin and just quite uh, bony and I wasn't very shapely. I feel a lot better with my body now. I'm just going to go back over my eyebrows. I have already done them, but I've got a little bit of foundation on them, so I'm just going to go back over lightly. There we go. That's better. So a question that I've had is, do you sometimes feel alone living in a big house by yourself? Uh, before I answer that, I'm using this MUA Lux Ombre 3 Shade Shimmer just to highlight. But the answer to that is, honestly, yes, I do feel lonely sometimes. Uh, I feel like the Christmas time is the main time to feel lonely because it's like meant to be like family time, but obviously I don't have my own family yet. Um, so it can be quite lonely, but I don't really notice it because I'm out at like the office all day. Uh, and then... I get home and I'm usually like home for a little bit like with the dogs and then I'll take them for a walk or I'll go for a drink of an evening and yeah I don't I don't really notice it I'm sure I would if I wasn't so busy but because I'm so busy it means that I don't really have time to feel uh I don't really have time to feel lonely because I'm always doing something so I'm either focusing on work or I'm out or I'm doing this and doing that, filming and meditating and with the dogs, I'm making dinner. Like, I don't really have time to feel lonely. Um, I know that a lot of people wouldn't want to live in a house on their own because they would feel like really, really alone. But for me, it's not really a big issue. I'm quite introverted as well, so I feel like it suits my lifestyle. Another question that I have on here is why do you want to quit YouTube? This is something that has been going through my head a lot recently. And it's just because, like, I don't know, I'm not 100% happy with the content I'm making and it's very time consuming and I feel like with my content, like, I can't, I don't know how to do the most fancy editing and I want to do more, I feel like all of my videos are kind of tailored to an audience and it's not me and I try to kind of act younger and stuff like that to try and connect with a younger audience. But I've realised recently, like, if you just be yourself and act how you want to act and film how you want to film, you're going to attract the audience that's right to you, right for you, actually. But that's kind of one thing. I feel like the content I want to make is for an older audience. Uh, I don't know. Like, I feel like this video and the conversation topics in this video wouldn't really appeal to a young audience as well. And I feel like this video is quite me like i'm just sitting and talking and i'm not overly hyper or anything like that i'm not trying to be anything i'm not um so yeah do you know another thing is my videos are just not being sent into subscription boxes like i like nine out of ten videos are sent into subscription boxes but it always seems to be that the videos i work the hardest on aren't sent into subscription boxes and I don't know why and a lot of people have told me like oh you've got low views because of the content or you've got low views because of this and because of that and I know that's not the case because I'm getting so many messages of subscribers saying this video wasn't in my subscription box this video wasn't in my subscription box I wasn't notified even though I have notifications on so I know it's not that I know it is YouTube and I also know it's not the content because it's content that is highly requested and the thumbnail is something that you click on and I know it's not the content so I'm not going to like focus on that too much but yeah it's really frustrating because it's really frustrating because I work so hard on making content and then YouTube doesn't even notify you guys that I've posted. I recently uploaded a, I'll put a little card here so you can click on the videos if you haven't seen them, I know a lot of you guys haven't. I posted a haul with loads of like really nice wintry pieces in and I also posted a week in my life which has been so highly requested and barely any of you guys have had it in your subscription boxes and barely any of you guys are notified about it and I had so many messages when I put it on my Instagram story saying I didn't even know you posted this, it wasn't in my subscription box. Like, I don't know. Don't know why YouTube doesn't send certain videos into subscription boxes. It's not like the content isn't appropriate or anything like that, so I don't know. I don't know. How did you gain weight? Because I've been eating a lot of junk food and it's not working. Also, what is your favorite place to shop? Um, how do I gain weight? I've literally been eating junk food all the time. I've been doing um, 
squats with a bar, like squats with weights, because they're a lot more effective. And I've been doing like ab works out, workouts to kind of tone my stomach and get like bigger legs. And that's what I'm aiming for. Like I'm fine with my arms and my upper body is like, it's an okay size. Like I'm an eight to 10, but I want to be like a full 10, if you know what I mean. So the eyeshadows that I've just used, I don't know the names of them, uh, let me see, I used S4 and S5 out of the Smashbox Full Exposure Palette, and then in the mattes I used M5, M6 and M7 as well to kind of blend everything together, and now I'm going to go back in with this little flat brush and go in with M6 just underneath my eye, which is something new that I've been doing. I've been adding colour to my lower lash line and I've, I've never done that before so I really like the look it's been giving. And now for mascara I'm going to be using the Rimmel Mascara. Let's find some more questions. Eliza asks are you going to start afresh with your YouTube? Um, I'm not going to start afresh in the sense I'm going to delete all my content and stuff like that because I think it's so silly when people delete all their content because I've done it before, I've deleted all my videos before and one, like it's annoying because I want to look back at the videos and two, you guys hate it, you guys hate when I delete videos because a video that I hate might be someone's favourite video that I've ever posted. Um, so I've deleted videos in the past and I thought, God, why have I done that a few months later? And um, what else? And it's also really bad if you want to work with brands because you've got nothing to show. Like, you can't say, oh, here's my work, take a look at it. It'd be like deleting your portfolio, in a sense. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to start fresh in that sense. But I am going to start filming videos that I actually enjoy and like and um, would watch myself. So, this video, for example, this is a video that I'd watch myself. It's just calm, it's not over the top, it's just chill. And I really like videos like that that are quite cosy and just realistic and... I feel like videos like Alicia Marie's, uh, she makes really fantastic videos and stuff like that, like the production quality is amazing, but I feel like videos like that appeal to a younger audience. So there are two YouTubers called Nikki and Gabby, they're twin sisters, and their their channel that they have together is like Stratospheric, they do really really well. I'm going to apply my lipstick right now while I'm talking. But yeah, their, their main channel does really well. Uh, and. A lot of people watch them, but I feel like that appeals to a younger audience because it is highly produced. And personally, I don't like the content on that channel. Like, it's like challenges and like sketches and skits and stuff like that. And that's not the type of stuff I like watching. Uh, yeah, that's not the type of stuff I like watching in the slightest. I like watching just chill videos, but uh, Gabby, she has a vlog channel uh, and she seems quite toned down, like in her vlog she seems quite toned down and chill and they're the only videos that I watch of hers, I'm not the biggest fan of Nikki, she seems like a lovely person but she seems quite like crazy and energetic and Gabby seems quite like chill from what I've seen, so I enjoy her vlog, so I think that's kind of what I'm going to be doing is just kind of making content that I would actually enjoy. Uh, so if you like this video, then stick around because you're going to be seeing a lot more content like it. I'm just going to do my eyeliner, I can't talk while I'm doing it. Let's make my eyes order. So I've managed to get that eyeliner literally perfect. And I know that my left eye is not going to look the same. So I'm just getting a friend to pick up some wall brackets for my TV because like I said I'm moving my TV onto the wall and um, I was going to get them myself but they were already over like in the area so they're good to move for me. Okay right, time for the left eye. Okay I'm actually really happy with my eyeliner on both eyes, can't believe it. Okay right, final touches, contour. Don't know why I left my contour to last, but here we go. So I've had a lot of questions on like, what are you doing for Christmas? What are your plans? I'm using the I Heart Makeup contour palette, by the way. 
Um, any products that I've used in this video, I will try and link in the description for you guys. But yeah, what am I doing for Christmas? So, my family usually goes to my nan's house on Christmas. Like, we sleep there on Christmas Eve. Um, and then wake up on Christmas morning and we have, like, the whole day there. And sometimes we sleep on um, Christmas Day as well and, like, spend a bit of Boxing Day there. And then we usually go to my granddad's house for Boxing Day. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen my granddad on Christmas Day, to be fair. But, yeah. So this year, so this year we're having Christmas at my house, which I'm quite nervous about, to be honest, because hosting Christmas... That's a big deal. That's a big responsibility. Like Christmas is the best time of the year. If I mess this up, everyone's Christmas is going to be ruined. So I'm really nervous about it. Um, my mom, my sister, and my brother are sleeping at my house this year, and then uh, we're having Christmas dinner here as well. I'm cooking Christmas dinner. Um, God knows why I agreed to this because I'm not the best cook. I'm a good cook, but I'm not fantastic. Um, but I've got a good menu prepared. I'm making my own cranberry sauce and everything, so it's really exciting. Um, I can't wait for Chuck to see like all the presents and stuff like that. And I've got a real fire as well. So, you know, Santa's actually coming down the chimney this year. And I've never stopped at house the real chimney because my nan has an electric fire. So Santa's always used a magic key. So he'll actually be able to visit us by coming down the chimney this year. So I'm so excited for that. Yeah, I have ordered a custom made dining table as well, which I know any of you that like live on your own and have looked into like dining tables and stuff like that are probably like gasping and like covering your eyes in horror. But I just couldn't find a dining table that I liked, that I was happy with, that I felt like fit the room. Like I just couldn't find one. So I've, I've done it bought a custom made dining table it's almost finished he's been working on it for like ages now and i know it's a little bit pricey and it's kind of stupid to do work for christmas but it is like an industrial style dining table it is gorgeous it is literally the most beautiful thing it's got blue legs to match my dining room and one thing that i do wish that i could have if I'm honest, is a piano. I found so many on a Facebook marketplace. There is no way I'm buying a first hand piano because they are like ridiculously expensive. I'd rather pull my eyes out than buy one. But um, yeah, I've been looking into a piano. I really like one in my dining room because I have this one wall that I don't know what to put on it. And I feel like, and I feel like a piano would just look perfect there. And I'd also like to learn how to play the piano, so that's what I want. So yeah, that is everything for my makeup. I'm completely finished, I'm done. Hope you guys like the finished result. This one I do on an everyday basis. Um, I feel like I've been here for ages. I don't usually take this long to do my makeup, it usually takes me like 15 minutes. But there we go, that's me finished. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of answered your questions. I hope I spoke about things that you wanted to hear about why I changed my name, the real reason I changed my name because I've had so many people make up reasons why I've changed my name, it's unreal um, but yeah quitting YouTube, all that so there we go, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, be sure to follow my social medias, they obviously all have a new name now that my name isn't Bethany anymore, my name is Victoria Elise Underwood if you didn't know, I, I can't believe I haven't even said that yet my name is out Victoria Elise Underwood, I think it is such a lovely name I've been thinking about it for ages, I was thinking about the different like variations on it and I just decided that Victoria Elise Underwood was perfect. I did think about Victoria Rose Underwood but I think that Elise sounds nice but I do like the name Rose. Um, who knows, I might add it in, Victoria Rose Elise Underwood. Who knows, no I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed uh, kind of more casual content um, because I know that I definitely do. I definitely enjoy videos where it's more chill and just sit down and just get to talk to you and not be really like, hi guys, blah blah blah, because that's just not me in the slightest. Um, but yeah, I need to stop saying um, I'm going to work on that. <laughs> I hope you guys have had a lovely day. Uh, it's Sunday, so enjoy it. And 
Also, please go watch my previous two videos. They weren't incented to subscription boxes, which just breaks my little heart because I worked so hard on them. So I'll put them on the little card here. It's a big fashion haul and also a week in my life that you guys really enjoyed. The ones who got it in their subscription box, watched it, enjoyed it, loved it. So be sure to check that out. And I will see you next Sunday with, I think I'm doing a drive with me next Sunday. So enjoy that. But I'm gonna stop talking at you now and just head off. But that's everything I wanted to say. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to the people that have been really supportive about me changing my name. I really appreciate it. So I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.